welcome to another video from explainingcomputers.com. This time, and in response to many requests, I'm going to give you my take on what's going on with AI. This is a subject I've been researching for many decades, and in the past I've discussed it in several different books, including Cyber Business in 1995 and Digital Genesis in 2017. As you may be aware, in March 2023, several notable individuals called for a pause in what they termed giant AI experiments. So, should we now fear artificial intelligence? Exactly what is meant by artificial intelligence can cause considerable debate. But a useful practical definition is that AI is computer software able to perform cognitive work. AI has also been in development since the late 1940s, when researchers first started to program computers to play chess. Since that time, the field has evolved from rule-based programs to the creation of artificial neural networks that can actually learn. AI development is now accelerating rapidly. Indeed, as I argued in Digital Genesis, in the 2020s we are now leaving the network computing age and entering the cognitive computing age, where most forms of digital technology will be able to possess or remotely access some form of AI. So far this revolution has largely been hidden from public view. But for over five years, IBM, Amazon, Google, Microsoft, Alibaba and others have been providing cloud-based AI services as we can see on their websites. Here for example we have solutions from IBM based on their Watson AI. Over here we've got machine learning on AWS AI from Amazon. Over here we've got Google's AI and machine learning products. And over here we've got Microsoft's Azure cognitive services. And what all of these do is to deliver low-cost access to artificial intelligence with little technical expertise required. In November 2022, a new Cloud AI service was launched by OpenAI. Called ChatGPT, this currently has free public access and provides a conversational text interface to a vast quantity of information. So, for example, if we tab on over to its interface, we could type something like, please write a 200-word review of the Shakespeare play Macbeth. And uh, there it goes, doing its stuff. And as it'll take a little time, I'll speed on through. And if we wanted to use this response elsewhere, we could just click on copy over here, go across to a word processor, paste it in, and as we can see, ChatGPT has done this part of our homework for us. Or for example, we could go back to the interface and we could try something like write some Python code to print hello eight times. And there it goes again, doing its stuff and it's finished. And if we scroll back up to see what it did, we can see there's the code it's written and it's even executed the code to show us the result. So, is what we've just seen incredibly useful or exceedingly scary? Well, Elon Musk, Steve Wozniak and many others are concerned that AI systems with what they term human competitive intelligence may pose a profound risk. As I noted at the start of the video, they therefore published this letter in which they've called for a pause in the development of machine learning systems more powerful than GPT-4 which is the latest version of ChatGPT. As the letter states, advanced AI could represent a profound change in the history of life on Earth, and should be planned for and managed with consummate care and resources. Unfortunately, this level of planning and management is not happening, even though recent months have seen AI labs locked in an out-of-control race to develop and deploy ever more powerful digital minds that no one, not even their creators, can understand, predict or reliably control. As the text continues, should we let our machines flood our information channels with propaganda and untruth? Should we automate away all the jobs, including the fulfilling ones? 
Should we develop non-human minds that might eventually outnumber, outsmart, obsolete, and replace us? Should we risk loss of control of our civilization? Such decisions must not be delegated to unelected tech leaders. Powerful AI systems should be developed only once we are confident that their efforts will be positive and their risks will be manageable. Now, signatories to the open letter want safety protocols and governance systems to be put in place. To this end, they published an accompanying policy paper, which we can find if we scroll down, down here. Here's our link to the paper. And in this paper, we find seven recommendations. They're somewhere down here where they're hiding. There they are. Here are the policy recommendations. And at first glance, these appear to be sensible and reasonable. Although on reflection, they are a bit idealistic. Not least, regulating access to the computer power needed to train AI models is likely to prove impossible in all countries. Indeed, it seems very unlikely that all governments would agree to a common set of audit and regulation measures. Now, it's important to stress that those advocating these proposals are not anti-AI. Indeed, we mustn't lose sight of the fact that AI is set to have an increasingly positive impact on a number of levels. Millions of years ago, organic life began in Earth's oceans. Fast forward to today, and new forms of cognitive entity are being crafted in the primeval soup of cyberspace. And personally, I think that these two evolutionary events are related. Human beings have become the dominant species by leveraging intelligence to help us to survive and to improve our quality of life. But today, on a crowded planet with finite resources, this is becoming more difficult. And one of the ways we're rising to this challenge is by developing and implementing AI. For example, artificial intelligence is increasingly being used to reduce infrastructure costs, to improve logistics and supply chain management, and to deliver energy savings. In healthcare, AI is also being applied to improve diagnosis and patient outcomes, as well as to speed the discovery of new medications. Sadly, these kinds of AI application get far less public attention than smart chatbots. But they are far more important. Indeed, if we look around the world today, we see increasing levels of complexity that are becoming harder and harder for human beings to manage. Across the planet, our systems of governance are clearly in crisis, with politicians rising to power on the basis of simplistic short-term promises, and then they face complex long-term challenges. And so, rather than resisting or trying to pause AI, I think we should be embracing it as rapidly as possible. Because I think it's only by using AI as an optimization and decision-making tool that we'll be able to maintain our current form of civilization. 20 years from now, it is very likely that most cars, most vehicles will be autonomous. They'll be driven by AI. And one consequence of that is that we'll have fewer deaths on our roads. And more broadly, I think the world will become a safer and a more sustainable place. The more decisions are made by AI and the fewer by politicians who play to the gallery of social media and 24-hour news. Now, having argued that we need to embrace AI, I do accept we need to take steps to make sure it's applied in an ethical fashion. And it's also very important to acknowledge that AI is going to have a significant impact on employment. As I've argued in another video, I don't think that AI will automate that many entire jobs. Rather, AI is going to automate a lot of work tasks. So rather than it being the case that maybe, say, 20% of jobs are automated away and 80% of people continue as they are, that's not going to be the state of affairs. What I think will happen is that lots and lots of work tasks will be automated across almost all jobs. So some people will find a few parts of their job are automated. Some people will find lots of parts of their job are automated. It won't be those people over there have a problem, everyone else continues as they are. That's a very important thing, I think, to, to understand. So that it means that over the next 
10 to 20 years, most of us will have to learn to work a bit differently as parts of our jobs become automated and as we start to have co-workers who are AIs and smart robots. That's going to be a very interesting transition. This all said, I still think we shouldn't fear AI for three reasons. Firstly, as I've just argued, AI is going to become increasingly necessary as an optimization tool if we want to maintain our current civilization. Secondly, AI has no agency and will not gain any unless it becomes both sentient and we choose to grant it legal powers. So, right now, what I worry about are the people who may use AI for bad purposes rather than AI itself. Those advocating a pause imply that it's AI systems that are polluting social and mainstream media with false information. And this is not true. Rather, it is human bad actors who are choosing to manipulate medias and minds to their own ends. Similarly, while chatbots and other AI systems may generate inaccurate or biased information, again, any involved risk relates to the human choice to trust them. So, the issue is one of user education, as well as ensuring that regulations remain adequate for holding people and organisations to account. Which, to be fair, is part of what those calling for a pause are asking for. Thirdly, and most fundamentally, the development of AI may play a critical role in our own evolution. And indeed, in my five ages of computing model, I predict that we'll progress from the cognitive computing age to a period of cyborg fusion. Given the rate at which humanity has embraced mass digital connectivity, it's surely reasonable to expect that one day direct brain-computer interfaces will be both developed and widely adopted. Indeed, I expect it will be future AIs that'll help us to develop such brain-computer interfaces. And when humans gain direct access to cyberspace, the line between organic and artificial intelligence will rapidly blur. So, to fear AI would be to fear the future evolution of ourselves. Now, admittedly, some people may very much fear the human race evolving into some kind of cyborg species. But, as far as I can see, it's already happening. Across the past 20 years, we have significantly embraced digital technology. Some people already seem to be surgically attached to their phone. And therefore, I would have thought right now the odds are very much in favour of the human race seeking deeper and deeper digital interfaces. Now, just before I bring this video to a close, you might be wondering, what does ChatGPT think about all this? And so earlier, I did ask it the question, should we fear AI? And it provided a relatively long answer, which I'll leave on screen for a few seconds for those with good eyes who want to pause the video. But I also went back and asked it to summarise your last answer in less than 40 words, which resulted in this. AI is not to be feared, but it is important to be mindful of its potential risks and ethical implications. Responsible development and use, along with regulations, can bring about positive benefits. And if you're wondering, before I asked ChatGPT, I wrote my own summary as follows. We should not fear AI, as it will help to maintain our current civilization, improve healthcare, and facilitate human evolution. So, we should fear what some people may do with AI, but not AI itself. And I'll leave you to decide which of us has provided the best answer. But now that's it for another video. If you've enjoyed what you've seen here, please press that like button. If you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. And I hope to talk to you again very soon. Hello.